Hey guys, it's Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. So yesterday was Thanksgiving, which means it's Christmas now. So we gotta start cranking out Christmas songs. And this is one I haven't uh, done before. Jingle Bell Rock. It's got some cool guitar decks in it, played by Hank Garland. Uh, this was originally sung by Bobby Helms, I think in 1957. So it's a huge hit here, at least in the States here. It's here, heard every year. I've heard it uh, probably a half a billion times in my own life. Um, so anyway, we're gonna check it out. All the cool little fills that... Um, Hate Garland does, um, and then the chords and, and all that fun stuff too. So before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when I release, uh, release a new video lesson. And uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. Uh, just click the link in the description below. Uh, there you'll find um, kind of a, a free seven-day trial that you'll get whenever you sign up. Uh, so that seven-day trial will give you full access to all my guitar courses in the Academy which include courses from a complete beginner course to more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training theory, and guitar tone, and all sorts of styles and stuff. So please go check it out. So, all, right, all right, let's start up here. We're in standard tuning, and we have this instantly recognizable little guitar lick that starts by Hank Garland. So we have this. All right, so there's no video of him doing this, not that I can find, so... Um, we'll talk about that in a second. You could be playing some places in different sections of the fretboard, but uh, I'll let you decide. So we have this opening the lick. So we're sliding into the, you're playing the 15th on the B and the 14th on the high E. So you have that going, and then you slide into the 14 on the, across the B and the high E, So and then back to the the, the major third, which is that 15 on the B, 14 on the high E. So you start with those. So I'm sliding into it, then pick them a couple times. And then. So when you slide in the second time, that 15 and 14, you're gonna go and grab the 17th from the high E string. So. Now here is where he could do this here which is the easiest place to do it. It sounds a little bit thinner than doing it here, which just sounds really warm when he's doing the recording. So uh, he's probably got a hollow body going, so it's probably why it sounds so good. But he could be doing there. But I'm gonna do it down here. It's much easier to play. So we're, we're playing the uh, 10th fret on the B in the high E, then to the 12th fret on the uh, B in the high E. Then kind of a kind of a slight bend in the lease on those notes. Back to the tens on the high E and the B. And then over to 12 on the G and the B. And then 11 on the G, 10 on the B. And then there's a little bass line in there, which is open A string, and then three, two, zero on the low E. And then we get to the verse, or maybe this is the chorus, but the main uh, chord to the song. And this is also maybe a little bit controversial here. This opening progression. So that opening one, where do you, it go? I'm playing it there in the beginning here from this, from a D major chord to a D major seven to a D six chord back to the D chord. Now that's not really what the harmony is doing underneath. Now the harmony is really being handled by those singers that you hear um, in the background, and there's some bass and stuff going on, but you hear them sing at that part. So I'm going to let you decide what you want to do. They play the, they sing that, and then you hear them go up to the. So they still get that C sharp, but they make it as part of an A chord. So the, the singers underneath are actually singing an A chord, not that D major seven. Um, you can actually hear an E in there. So 
you can cheat it, maybe have the open high E string in there, but um, it. But when you're doing it on your own without the singers and following the vocal line, it does sound better just to do it as a D major seven. And and Hank Garland's doing it. He's implying a D major seven there too. So we're gonna continue that. But I just wanted to let you know that when you're hearing that, if you're really in tune with what's going on in the background, it's actually a D major chord to an A chord. Or, and then back to a D. Uh, but we people like to fancy and kind of follow the vocal melody. So that would be a D major to a D major seven, which is just the open D with the bar across the second fret of the G, B, and the high E. And then, still the open D, second fret on the G, open B, and that open B is what makes it a, um, a six chord. And then the, still the second fret on the high E. And then... Some people like to go up, back up to the major 7 instead of going to the D. Whatever you think sounds good. It sounds nice. That's fine. Or just... That sounds fine too. So whatever you like, D, D major seven, D six, back to the major seven, or D, D major seven, D six, back to the D. All right, so those are the controversial points, and other than that, we'll just continue on. By the way, this version's obviously in D here. Um, he, he sung multiple versions of this song, so I believe some are in C, and some, they kind of move around in key. So this is, I think, the original one he did in 57. So at least it's the one that's on Spotify. So we have this. And then, so that's maybe play it like that. D, D major seven, D six, back to the D major seven, then back to the D. Then we get to this, uh, just call it a G sharp diminished. So I'm just playing the first fret on the uh, D, D string, second fret on the G, first fret on the B, Second fret on the high E. And then we go to a series of E minor 7 chords to A7 chords. Now, I recommend doing this E minor 7 voicing like this, because you do hear that. You hear that change going into harmony underneath. So you wanna, you're going to want that D there instead of just doing it like this. Which you see some people do, which doesn't sound that great. So, Hold an E minor chord, then add the third fret there on the B string. And then play an A dominant seven chord, which is just like an A major chord, but you pick up the note that's on the G string, so make it an open G in there. So he rotates between those two, so from there with. Seven, A seven again. E minor seven, A seven. E minor seven, A seven. E minor seven, A seven. And repeat. So from there, we have a different progression coming. Uh, so this, that, it resolves to the D after that A7 to a D, and then it turns it into a D7. So it sounds like this. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the part where I wrote. In the frosty air, what a bright time is the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell. All right, so we have that D to a D7. So that's that, um, just the second fret on, open D, second fret on the G, first fret on the B string, and second fret on the high E. 
And then the vocals come in. What a so that's a G major chord. So this is the same chord we did at the first fret, but now at the, the diminished chord at the third fret. And then back to the D and to the D7. So what we have there. There, back to the G chord. Jingle time, it's a... Now we get to an E dominant seven chord. So you're gonna play that with an open low E string, second fret on the A, open D, first fret there on the uh, G string, that third fret on the B again, open high E, and resolve it to an A. You go right and then I want. So after that little bass line, we now have a new chord progression that's also got some fills in it. So it sounds like this. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle all around the clock. And the mingle and the jingle and the That's the jingle bell rock. All right. So a lot of stuff going on there. If you don't have to do those fills, you can just kind of keep holding the chords, but I think the, the fills sound good. So we're gonna start here with that, um, kind of the same thing. All right, so that right there, when we got back to the D chord. So that goes at D. D with C in the bass, so that's, you can pick that finger that's up on the uh, high E string and move it over to the third fret on the um, A string. And then you take it to a B dominant seven chord. So that's gonna be a bar at the second fret. So it's gonna be the second fret on the A, fourth on the D, second fret on the G, and fourth fret on the B. So there you can just hold that. Or you can do the fill there, which is starts with part of the chord here, the second fret on the G and the B, and then move it up three frets to the fifth fret, and then move it up three more frets to the eighth fret. So we have this. Kind of hitting each one three times. And then we're to this G. Now you're gonna to want to do this the G bar chord because it goes to a G minor chord right after it, and it's, it's an easier transition than doing that. So we have a G major, so it's a full bar at the third fret, and you're gonna add the fourth fret on the G in front of it, and the fifth fret on the D and the A. So from here, that's that G major chord. And then take it down to G minor by just picking up the middle finger. So then uh, Hank Garland does goes into a E dominant nine chord, and he goes up from a half step below. So the dominant nine you'll play as the you're barring across the seventh fret on the high E, the B, and the G string. Play the sixth fret on the D, and then the uh, seventh fret on the A again. So start that a fret lower and slide into that. Um, E, make it an E dominant. And then go to an A7 chord. And I'm gonna do this one right here, which is the full bar at the fifth fret. So different than what we did earlier. Um, and then we have the seventh fret on the A, sixth fret on the G in front of it. And then we go to just a D major, or you can do it here, but if you're gonna do the fill, probably do it here, which is the fifth fret of the A string bar across the seventh fret of the D, G, and the B. And then you come up and grab this fill, which is the 12th fret on the, the double stops, 12th fret on the G and the B, followed by the 11th fret on the G, 10th on the B, 
Once again, hit each one three times and then move that down two frets. The eight on the B, nine on the G. So that whole section there is like this. do that fill all right and then we're basically back to the previous progression uh, that we started the the song with with it and then you hear the we have that little vocal melody that comes in there, does the, the chorus underneath it. Um, now we can just do the chorus the exact same way we did the first time through. If you don't, if that's cool with you, we can just do it that way. But they add this little thing at the end, which so. So that comes at a. keeps going through the song so that's just the little thing that they put at the end of it if you want to do it, it it's this this is this little a major triad here sixth fret on the g fifth on the b fifth on the high e. then go to this um fourth fret on the um g string third fret on the b fourth fret on the high e. so All right, so we have this first two, the, and then move up here, sixth fret on the G, fifth fret on the B, third fret on the high E. And it, it's to, to know where they come in, this hear that, it's a little chromatic, they have a little chromatic vocal melody going with it, so it's that little, All right, so that's the same progression we did before. You can play it like we did before or add that little fancy ending to it. And then we're back to the exact same. We did this earlier. Same thing. Now here, they extend it. So this is the end of the song here. So that little E sliding into E9 to the A7, instead of just doing it one time, he does it three times. That's Now, there's the D chord that happens there, but then we have that ending fill that you're going to need to jump into instead. The, uh, and this ending fill, it's got some really cool stuff in it as well. It looks like this. All right, so that starts with the same thing. We're sliding into the 15 on the B and the 14 on the high E. Do that. Hit it a couple times if you slide it, and then do that again. So do it twice. And then we have this. Now here, I feel like it's played up here because it just goes too fast. Plus, it's more awkward doing it. Here, you gotta kind of take that bar and bend it up. It's, poss it's possible he did it here. But it just sounds like he does it up here. So. So we... Do that twice and now we start the little lick so that's playing the 14 on the G B and then 15 on the B and 17 on the high E hit those together 
Then jump over here to the 17 on the D string, 16 on the G, 17 on the B. Play that and kind of kind of bend them, pull them down and, and then uh, release. Then you go down to this D major um, triad here, which is 16th on the D, 14 on the G, 15 on the B. And then back up to the previous chord without the kind of bend stuff on it, and then back down to the D. So we hit this. And then this really cool ending chord. So it's a D chord with an A in the bass. We have the open A, open D, ninth fret there on the G, then the tenth fret there on the B string and the high E. It's really cool stuff. All right, so that's the typical of the era. There's some really cool chord work in this, those kind of like a lot of jazz bass guitar voicings and stuff. Uh, so all these like classic hits, it's got some of the coolest harmony going on, moving around underneath it. And these days, not so much, unfortunately. But anyway, this is a great one. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. It's got some great chords to learn in it, some great chord progressions, and some really cool guitar licks by Hank Garland. All right, I hope it brightens up your uh, holiday time. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.